Hi, I'm Das from a computer water cooling store in Canada, dasmo.com, and this is my part 5 of complete water cooling guide. In this video I would like to talk about selection of graphical card blocks and if I have enough time to touch uh, motherboards. Uh, this subject is very similar to the subject that we discussed in part 4, how to select your uh, c uh, CPU blocks. So um, we will probably will just go quickly through the um, <clears throat> what kind of blocks you can choose and uh, look on an additional specifics which related only to the graphical cards specifically or motherboard specifically okay so let me remind you that uh, there's a uh, three kinds of uh, block finish you can get uh, one of them is will be with plastic glass top uh, which is uh, least expensive typically and the next one will be acetal which is uh, uh, softer material, uh, less prone to crack, but easy to damage and it's not transparent. And um, <clears throat> also, in terms of the copper itself, you can have a bare copper or you can have something which is uh, nickel or chrome plated, and that looks uh, more nice, uh, oxidized less, and um, quite often is more appealing choice for. Uh, majority of the water cooler enthusiasts so with um, with GPU blocks uh, difference in performance even less um, appealing than with the CPU when in CPU at least have some blocks which is perform better and uh, um, some blocks a little bit perform worse so with the new models you definitely have advantage um, <coughs> Typically, graphical card blocks is has a quite primitive uh, internal design. It's just uh, um, water pass with a few rough fins inside, and um, you whatever you choose, uh, more likely performance will be very very similar. So again, I, I will tell you, don't sweat too much. Uh, select your block based on how it looks and um, if you look plastic top or fully metal block and uh, just just make a designer decision here what you need to pay attention is uh, not really a technical details the most complicated part of selecting gpu block is actually compatibility when for cpus you pretty much cover it it doesn't matter what kind of uh, motherboard you have or CPU type um, it's almost guaranteed that you can water cool you can water cool Xeons and AMD and i7 and i5 and uh, all the quads and it's mounting is available it's not an issue with graphical cards it's the biggest gamble for you for your build and uh, I would say that it's not obvious but if you decided that you're going to water cooling and you know for sure that you would like to water cool your graphical cards instead of buying graphical cards and then frantically looking for which blocks will fit it I would suggest you to go opposite and save you a lot of trouble and, and wasted time you select the block you like and for the type of the card you're looking for and then a purchase the manufacturer which has a block available the problem with the GPU blocks that the bottom part of the GPU blocks is uh, like a glove and it's and it's make specific carving of bottom part is made specifically for the circuit board of the card so when let's say Nvidia issued new new card and say okay this is a standard design which is called reference design so people make the carving exactly made for the for this design so when you put the card on the block to cool it off um, it's no obstacles it just sit on it and fits perfectly then what's happening all the time with with GPUs that EVGA or 
ASUS decides they do something, some improvement or whatever reason they want to do that, they, they move one single capacitor or whatever other electronic component uh, two inches away on the motherboard and what's happened, you try to put your block and you hit the obstacle and everything get, you know, doesn't fit perfectly. So the compatibility issue for the GPU cards is the most annoying, most difficult um, subject to deal with when, you, when you're trying to watercool your card. So again, make yourself favor, you have an idea which card you want, now check out if actually you can watercool it. The only exception of this situation is will be if you will use a non-full cover block. What I mean by that, that typically what most people prefer to buy, they buy blocks that's specifically designed for this model, it fits this model perfectly, it covers your main chip, uh, your VRMs and your memory, and so in one solution you cool it off and get a good result. For people who have non-reference design cars um, and can't find full cover block, it's not on the end of the road you still can put a only specific block similar to the CPU CPU block uh, just on the main chip and cool it as similar to CPU and the rest you have no other choice just to put a bunch of heat sinks all over the place and blow air on it so this is a half so to speak water cooling solution you, you cool effectively with the water only the biggest chip on 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 a, on, a, on a circuit board, but the everything else is uh, still air cooled with the heat sinks and fan, which which is goes. So uh, it's getting least and least popular. I would say for every full cover block sold, or I would even say for every hundred uh, full cover water blocks sold you have probably one block which is um, universal so to speak so you have some universal mounting that goes to any kind of block because <clears throat> all you need just match four holes on, on a circuit board and uh, have enough square footage of the bottom of the block to cover the big chip that's all you need so it's relatively easy you don't interfere with any other components so this possible but this is a last resort so to speak um, EK actually trying to change this a little bit. They released very advanced um, Supreme HF based version of Universal Block, so you can cool um, your main chip on, on the card is really, really efficiently, much more efficient than with a full cover block with a, just a basic water chamber. But it still um, leave the sub question open what you do with the rest of the components because the rest of the components you still have to put a bunch of heat sinks and blow air on them so you can <coughs> keep the rest of the car uh, cool enough and it won't be overheat in, in other parts of the car okay so that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you about the graphical cards um, make your homework, don't rush and buy first check out if it can be water cooled your best bet is go to EK Waterblocks configurator on their website and check out if um, full cover block is available for you EK the biggest manufacturer of the graphical cards uh, they cover a lot of cards that other people don't cover I would say that uh, for the rest, like coolants and the uh, heat killer and um, XSPC, um, the only making blocks for the the hottest mainstream cards, like 480 was issued. Obviously, is very popular card, and a lot of people bought it. So a few manufacturers come up with a version of that card. Uh, 580 is the same story, but for example, for let's say 5970 for reference design there's AK and couple others and then manufacturers start making variations of, of the same circuit board, board like um, 50 um, 
970 version 2 and something like this everybody just pfft, bail out didn't do anything and only a case step up and actually made a few blocks which fits those non-referent design cars so I would say that if EK doesn't make it there's very little chance that you find somebody else would because uh, there are no real manufacturers who support uh, graphical cards uh, water cooling so uh, let's look on the motherboards motherboard is um, probably the like least um, popular way of water cooling um, the actual benefit of going to water cool your motherboard is uh, not as dramatic as uh, for CPU when you gain like really good overclocks because you have efficient cooling or with your graphical card then you definitely kill the crazy noise uh, from the um, turbo kind of fan that installed on the modern graphical cards and definitely can go a bit more overclocking because it cools um, uh, still better than, than the traditional heat thing. With, with the motherboard it, it's more like um, in my personal opinion it's just to make a complete system to make everything water cooled um, the overheating of motherboard as a as not dramatic as for the CPU or GPU so I would say it's very optional item if you would like to do that go ahead um, it's unlikely will impact um, seriously your overclocking uh, potential but it's it's look nice and um, it's a hobby after all so for motherboard the same rules apply as for graphical cards make sure that your motherboard uh, is supported by any of manufacturer again EK is probably the biggest and is the easiest way to check if you have a, a cover block for that um, the best case to go with the motherboard cooling is by um, the block which is one piece one big piece with have a, like, a weird shape uh, sometimes uh, and have one inlet and one outlet um, more challenging if you have um, block for motherboard which has a separate components let's say for the nose bridge you have one piece of the block and for MOSFETs you can have two more pieces of the block which is typical for all the cards because the current trend to make one block for everything um, multiple blocks is um, is okay there are no real difference in performance here the difference is is just because you need to use more fittings you need to route more tubing and sometimes your connections can be really awkward and short you can look on my other videos when I have a gigabyte board with uh, three blocks uh, for the motherboard plus CPU plus dual cars and with so many connections so many tubing involved um, it's quite challenging you need to think a lot to make it look nice um, it's not a problem to do bird nest but to make it nice looking that's a problem and if you have instead of let's say six connections with three blocks uh, you can have only two with one block that covers all parts that required your life is so much easier so if you have a choice between uh, like one piece block or multiple piece block uh, definitely go for the single piece because um, you'll thank me later for that okay so um, there not much to talk about um, the types of the block for motherboards the same story you choose what you want in terms of um, copper or copper nickel and tops again the same choices um, can be metallic or can be variations of plastic um, again just when you buy a complete shebang uh, good idea to make it uh, look unified so if you go with plexi go plexi everywhere and uh, metal uh, and acetal so on and so forth so just make one uh, nice looking um, <clears throat> you also can consider what um, like what kind of coolant you use you'd like to see it inside of the blocks and go plexi if you don't care um, can be anything else um, you can look what kind of tubing you have and again to to match, uh, make um, statements through the not only through the performance characteristic but also how it looks. So um, 
that's uh, well probably not much tips here which is like eye opening but as a biggest tip again I can give you just do uh, your water cooling uh, project a little bit in reverse here check out if the parts available and then choose the parts that you want and uh, if there are none then you just know you can go water cooling right or you have to go something else and um, well that's pretty much it uh, let me finish up and think uh, which part will go next